Welcome back, everybody. Another edition of Freedom Steel. Todd Vandermeid, former NRA contract lobbyist, Illinois gun law guru here. The other day we talked about Cook County and their claim that, uh, quote, assault weapons deploy more force than is necessary and therefore their use falls outside the legal parameters of self-defense under Illinois law. All right. And it got me thinking about this whole self-defense thing because if you go through the briefs that we are seeing in the cases across Illinois from Cook County to the state to whatever, I'm, de I'm detecting a pattern. And so let's go back to the post-Heller days. And back then, remember, the other side tried to twist the holding in Heller. They tried to say it was only handguns in the home for self-defense. They were trying to make a three-part conditional test out of what there was. And that wasn't the case. They said, you know, Heller said, for all lawful purposes, such as self-defense within the home so self-defense within the home is like the bullseye on the target it's the x-ring it is the most sacrosanct of any part of the right in post new york they've been trying to bootstrap this not just an a firearm that's in common use and they're trying to mitigate that with uh, all kinds of you know, statistics and percentages and per capita and whatever. Uh, they're completely ignoring Catano. However, uh, they sit there and they've tried to say in common use and used for self-defense. Not that you keep it in the bedroom on the nightstand for self-defense. Not that it's leaned up in the corner for self-defense. No, that they have actually physically been used for self-defense, uh, overtly in some form or fashion. And it's like, okay, why are they doing all this? And then you start putting one plus one plus one together. So just like they want to have this test that's in common use and actively used for self-defense, they're trying to make that the test instead of just in common use. So what happens if we go back to uh, Colonel Crayon in his second declaration where he sits there and says that we never, we didn't use uh, M4s or the like, or they were always offensive weapons and, and therefore assaulting and therefore uh, whatever. They're not used for self-defense. Well, number one, I beg to differ. If somebody is shooting at me, I'm definitely going to shoot back. And I'm not going to drop an AR or an M4 and go to a sidearm. That was never, uh, when I was a 60 gunner, yes, I had a sidearm. I had a 1911 as a sidearm. There is no way, shape, or form that if somebody ever started shooting at us, that I was going to unass the 60 and go for my 1911. No. I was going to make them holier than the Pope. You know, that was, uh, it was going to be fire by volume. Um, but that being on the side, uh, so they're trying to create this narrative. So you've got all kinds of experts talking about over penetration and things like that in the declarations. And you've got Colonel Crayon over here sitting there and saying that oh, we, we, we didn't use these for self-defense. So they're trying to, so if you go back to the test that they're trying to bootstrap up, and now you have these experts saying not useful for self-defense, then you add in Kim Fox and her cray-cray that's out there where you, you sit there, and, and to quote her, to quote their brief, assault weapons deploy more force than is necessary, and therefore their use falls outside of the legal parameters of self-defense under Illinois law. Well, first off, I completely disagree 
with that. The lawyers I have talked to say that when somebody employs self-defense, like the video clip we showed you before, where three armed assailants start attacking you from outside the home, oh yeah, oh yeah, you will definitely, uh, you know, it's going to be hard for them to argue that somebody grabbing an AR is not uh, readily, you know, usable for self-defense. They specifically cite, given the performance capacity of the regulated assault weapons, plaintiffs here cannot make a showing that the kind and amount of force discharged by an assault weapon would qualify as self-defense under Illinois law. Everybody knows you never go full retard. So let's kind of thread these two together. You have experts on one hand saying they're not useful for self-defense. You have the anti-gun legal establishment, on the other hand, saying it's illegal for them to be used for self-defense. They can see no justification any way, shape, or form. Now, this has a couple of pitfalls in it. First off, what about pistol caliber carbines? You mean to tell me that a 9mm coming out of a 9mm platformed AR or uh, an MP5 platformed HK or clone. Uh, they're just shooting pistol caliber rounds. That uh, you know, even a Ruger Camp Carbine in nine millimeter. That is somehow illegitimate uh, when facing an attacker or multiple attackers. I don't buy it. But what they're trying to do here is they're laying all this groundwork. Not for the district court. No. The reason they're filing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages is to build a record for the appellate court and to build a record that they're going to flaunt in front of the Supreme Court. And what all this is, is it's them trying to discount any available usage of the most common firearms around for self-defense. We've already seen in pleadings, oh, they're only used you know, half a dozen times, you know, a, a mere, you know, 0. 0.000 whatever percent of actual self-defense shootings involve a, you know, involve an AR or so-called assault weapon or whatever. And so with all that, they try to diminish the usage, the legal standing to use one, and the experts saying, doesn't happen, this is not what we would choose to use. And therefore, they are trying to say that these guns are never used in self-defense, even though we know that they are. And because of that, they cannot be protected under the standard of review of Heller or New York. That's what they're trying to get at. They are trying to disqualify ARs by virtue of arguing they are not used in self-defense. If you go back to the oral arguments... And the Bianchi case, which is the Maryland challenge, the challenge that a Maryland semi-auto ban, the, the state in there said that if the court was going to find against the state, they would want the opportunity to go back through their list and count each and every time each and every firearm enumerated on that list is used in self-defense. That's how far down into the weeds, just because, you know, to them, just having it leaned up against the bedroom wall in the corner there isn't good enough. Having it like old grandpa had something hanging over the fireplace mantle ready to go, that's not good enough. And so this is one of their new tactics. Just like dangerous or unusual or the bootstrapping of the three-part in common use plus self-defense actually used in self-defense test, that's what they're all gaming at here. They are trying to go after this stuff in such a way as to try to disqualify them. They, they know that based on the numbers in Catano, they're going to lose on in common use. So now they're trying to make the one plus one plus one in common use for self-defense actually used in self-defense to be their test and then disqualify these guns 
in a number of ways. They're never, as a percentage, they're never actually used in self-defense. Well, you've got six cases around the country in the last five years, whatever that number works out to be, and all that stuff. And so this is the thinking. This is where the other side is going to go in how they're trying to fight. They are grasping at straws. This is the best they got. They only wrote so much history in 1791. That's it. So it's not like you got George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, you know, and Madison and the like all sitting there in the multiverse creating new stuff, and that'll be another video. But with all that, um, this is where I think they're going. Watch when you read the other briefs. Look for experts discounting the use of rifle caliber semi-autos in self-defense and however you want to describe it, whether they're, they're too cumbersome for moving around a home environment, whether they're just over-penetration, we've seen that in the Cook County case, their distance, all that kind of stuff, all the things they've argued here in Cook County. So uh, just, just add these things up, and when you see these same themes appearing, over and over in other states and other briefs know what they're trying to do. And that's the kind of stuff we like to point out here at Freedom Steel and give you a deeper, different look at what we think the trends are that are going out there. So as always, guys, we are uh, nudging up there towards 7,000 subscribers. Thank you very much for all that. Yes, for some of you that have noticed, the... Uh, uh, whiskey collection behind me is growing thanks to some very generous uh, patrons out there who have uh, sent me a couple of care packages. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all that. Copy and paste the link and share it around to all your uh, social media stuff. Uh, we really appreciate all that. It's helping us grow all this. The more we can get around, the better off we are. And as always, guys, remember, frag out.